Welcome everyone. This is our uh, lunch training opportunity and today's topic is wildfire suppression fund. And Rob Miller, our senior fiscal analyst, will be presenting the training today on this and it is recorded so that we will post it onto the website later and then you can go back and re-listen um, if you choose. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Robert Miller. I am a uh, the fiscal analyst for the Legislative Fiscal Division. I do Section C, uh, which, among other agencies, includes DNRC, which is responsible for um, fighting wildfires in the state of Montana. Uh, so I put together some visuals here I'm going to share with you. I want to start off by just sort of talking about the, the challenge here in Montana. We've got about 93 million acres of land in Montana. And we, when we're talking about fire suppression, we break this up basically into three different parts. We've got the state lands, which are about 4.9 million. We've got the county and local. Uh, there's about 55.5 million. And then the federal lands, there's about 32.7 million. Um, and a good portion of that federal lands is uh, heavily forested. Uh, we're here to talk today about the, the costs of, to the state for defending the state, and county, and local lands. So I'm going to go to this next slide here. Rob, we're not seeing the slide show presentation. Okay, why aren't we? How are you seeing it now? Yes, thank you. All right. So I'm gonna go back to this slide here again, just to show you um, the breakup of the land here. Once again, the state, county and federal land here. Here we have um, a map of Montana uh, with those lands broken out visually so you can kind of get a scale of the problem, uh, the challenge facing us. The federal lands are in the light green uh, and you can see the state lands are in that gray area there and the purple which would be the local county lands they are all uh, that that's kind of the major portion of it. Uh, that is important because on the state and local lands or on the local lands, it's the local county fire departments and city municipal part departments that are the first responders to those to those uh, uh, lands under protection. So what are the resources? So the resources is we have the County Cooperative Fire Protection Program. We've got about 400 city, municipal, county fire departments. You've got the Montana Department of Natural Resources and Conservation. We also have the U.S. Forest Service Bureau of Land Management and Bureau of Indian Affairs, which are, which are responsible for the federal lands, but they also will aid us uh, with equipment, advice, uh, and, also, and sometimes some FEMA funding. And then the bottom bar down there is the Montana Wildfire Suppression State Special Revenue Account, which is how we primarily appropriate money for fighting fires here in Montana. Just to give you a little history, um, I thought I'd throw this picture in here. Uh, if you were living in Montana in 1889, um, these are the brave souls that stood between you and wildfire and their equipment. Um, and we've come some distance from them that time. A little history of the legislation revolving fires. In 1885, we authorized fire companies to be formed. Uh, now, bear in mind, these companies were for-profit companies um, and kind of 
you know, an interesting sidelight to this is in a town, if you had two fire companies, there was usually a mad race to get to the fire first, because if you got there second, you didn't get paid. And of course, if you got there at the same time, there would be other distractions uh, uh, between the two companies deciding, you know, who gets to fight the fire. In 1889, municipal fire departments were authorized. Those fire departments became mandatory in 1937. So this would be a requirement that if you're a city or town in the state that you would have to organize a municipal fire department. 1945, we had the rural fire districts uh, that were set up to uh, protect land, farmland, rangeland, forests uh, that were basically outside the municipalities. Then we created fire, fire service areas in 1987. Uh, these are areas that if the, a certain percentage or number of landowners within the area wanted to set up a fire service area and then basically tax themselves to provide um, some fire service, uh, they would be allowed to do that. Uh, it turns out that in the statute, you need about three owners of real property to propose the service area, or if you don't have 30 owners, just a majority of the folks could establish that. A little history of fires. Uh, here's a map of Montana. Uh, that, this is um, the history of wildfires between 1889 and 1910. And basically what you're looking at there is the big burn of 1910 that's all there in the purple. If you look at 1911 to 1987, you can see that Really, the only fires that occurred uh, were up in the upper northwest corner in the Kalispell area. Um, there was not a lot of fires going on, and this had to do with fire policy of suppressing all wildfires. Now, this is a, this is a 76-year period. I'll flash back to the previous slide so you can just graphically see over 76 years. Those were the fires that broke out. Um, what you need to kind of keep in mind is that all this fire suppression it kept the fires down, but during that 76 years, the fuels were building up because we were not suppressing the fires. Then we get to 1988, and we had a lot of fires. Um, if you look down there, we also included the fires down in Yellowstone Park. If you look at the uh, northwest corner of Wyoming there, uh, not really in Montana, but it was such of a historical significance to the folks in the state, we have included it. From 1989 to 1999, we had a number of fires. They didn't get real big, but you can see where they, they they were popping up more and more often. In 2011 to, to uh, 2022, um, or excuse me, uh, to 2010, 2000 to 2010, we had a lot of fires that covered a lot of area, uh, all these in the green. Uh, so that's, that suppression and the droughts that occurred, that was all catching up with us. You take one more look from uh, 2011 to 2022, and we had a lot of fires out there. You can see out there in the east, up or near the reservoir, you can see the lodgepole complex. Uh, if you go back and you look uh, just north um, northwest of Helena, you can see the Rice Ridge fire of 2017. Those were big years for us. So taking a look at, well, where do wildfires occur in Montana? Well, wildfires basically occur, occur where the fuels are. So you can see the mountains of the West, there's a lot of potential for wildfire. Um, also down around Yellowstone Park and then kind of um, uh, down around Yellowstone County, there's a lot of uh, fuels uh, either due to forest or grasslands. 
The other thing to note is I've got a note there on the slide that in recent years, new residential and commercial development in the wildland urban interface of Flathead, Ravalli, Missoula, Yellowstone, and Gallatin counties has kind of complicated the mission. And I've labeled those counties here. You can see them. This is where people are moving to. Um, why is that a complication? Well, it changes fire policy a little bit. Uh, these are areas where uh, you really can't just let the fires burn if they're threatening homes or businesses or other state infrastructures. Uh, you bring in you bring in all the assets that you can to put those fires out. And from a fiscal point, why is that important? Well, it's important because that costs a lot of money. So how much money have we spent recently? Here's a wildfire suppression history for Montana. These are wildfire costs and they are, just, they are adjusted for inflation. So these are current dollars. On the major fires there, you can see I put in the acreage burned. Uh, the brown lines, uh, those are the fires that were above average cost. The green dashed line there is the average cost of fires adjusted for inflation since 2002. That's about $30 million. What's of note here is that if you look at the costs that are above average, they're substantially above average with the exception of the, the year 2020. Uh, these are, uh, we tend to, when we have a bad year, it tends to be really bad. Uh, the, it, I think we had four years that are depicted on this chart uh, that were above average that were actually twice the average cost. The other thing to note is if you look at 2023, uh, we only had 23,000 acres burned up in the state, but we had an above average fire year. Uh, and by the way, I, I would mention I'm referring to these years. These are not fiscal years. These are calendar years. That's kind of how historically how we track these things. Uh, but in 2023, last summer, uh, we didn't have a lot of fires in terms of acres, but it was expensive because of where the fires were. So let's talk a little bit about fire suppression funding prior to 2008. Uh, the way the Department of Natural Resources would uh, pay for their fires is they would pay for it out of their general fund appropriation to the Department of Forestry. Now that appropriation is appropriated by the legislature for things other than fires. So what they would do is they would pay for it out of that budget. And then the next time the legislature met, they would come in and basically ask for a supplemental to replace that funding so that they could go fund the sort of things that forestry would normally do other than suppress wildfires. In 1971, the legislature authorized the governor to spend up to $750,000 a biennium to cover the cost of emergencies. Now that's all emergencies. So that would be wildfires, it would be snow emergencies, it would be flooding or any other emergency that the governor would would declare. Uh, and that was sufficient back in those years, because if you remember the chart we looked back in those years, there was not a lot of fires going on. In 1996, the authority was increased to $10 million. And then in tw the year 2000, it was increased to $12 million. Um, in 2004, they increased the authority to 16 million, which is where it remained up to prior to this biennium. In the last biennium, they temporarily increased it to 20 million, the legislature. Uh, but in the next biennium, it'll go back to 16 million. In the summer of, uh, of uh, 2007, we had 37.9 million uh, in fire suppression costs, and we had 51.3 million in the year 2008. Obviously, the governor's wildfire, his emergency funding of 16 million was not sufficient to cover that. 
So in 2008, the state of Montana created the Montana Wildfire Suppression Account. Uh, the Wildfire Suppression Account was established by the legislature and appropriated the Department of Natural Resources for wildfire suppression, mitigation, preparedness, and equipment purchases. Now, I'll stop here for a moment. It was primarily for wildfire suppression. They could spend money on mitigation, such as fuel reductions or preparedness, like pre-positioning equipment, equipment purchases, but that was limited to $5 million a biennium. And only in certain bienniums where certain triggers, financial triggers were met. The legislature seeded this account with $40 million from the general fund, but the revenues that were provided really were not reliable revenues. What I have here is a uh, basically a history of that wildfire suppression fund. And if you look at the left in 2008, you can see where the $40 million went in. But as I said, there weren't any reliable, uh, there was not a reliable revenue stream going in there. So as you can see, the bars just kind of declined down to almost nothing in fiscal year two, uh, 2013. When we had a bad fire year. Uh, in response to that, the legislature came in and they created House Bill 354. House Bill 354 um, provided some revenue streams, but it also, what it did is it capped the fire fund, uh, at a, a, it capped the fire fund. Now those revenue streams were a little bit better than they were in uh, 2008 to 2013, but they also were, um, not real consistent. And those revenue streams were basically excess um, uh, general fund appropriation that was reverted to the general fund at the end of the biennium. Uh, a certain portion of that would go into the fire fund. Also, the other thing that went into the fire fund was if the governor did not use um, his entire uh, emergency appropriation of the 16 million, the un unused part also went into the fire fund. So, and I'm going to, if you'll just look over there at fiscal year 2023 and 2024, we had House Bill 883, which was passed in the 2023 session. And as you can see, there's a big increase. Uh, let's talk about, and that is how we fund fires today. So how are we funding this through House Bill 883? Well, in short, we fund fire suppression from the general fund and that's deposited in the wildfires suppression state special revenue account. There are three things that House Bill 883 did. First thing it did is it seeded the fire suppression account with $152 million. Then we set up a mechanism that would transfer general fund to the fire suppression account at the end of each biennium to bring the balance to an equivalent of 6% of the general fund revenues in the second year of the biennium. Um, and I have to, we, when I put this slide together, we were estimating that would be about 200 million in the 2025 biennium. Uh, they did just make that transfer. It was about 49 million, and that brought the balance up to 190 million. Uh, the House Bill 883 also did something else. Uh, if you'll recall, I was talking about the $5 million for biennium that went to mitigation, fires, uh, preparedness, and equipment purchases. Uh, House Bill 883 increased that from $5 million per biennium to $30 million per biennium. So that's a significant change in policy on how this money is to be spent. A quick little graphic of the wildfire uh, suppression account. Um, as you can see that first box up there, uh, excess general fund balance uh, goes in there and there's a description of how it is, but just 
to keep in mind it's any unused general fund balance goes into the fire suppression account. There was the one time only transfer of 152 million. And then down that bottom box, you can see at the end of the biennium, uh, the unused portion of the governor's um, uh, emergency authority goes into the fire suppression account. I have $20 million in there right now. Just bear in mind, that's for this biennium. That'll go back to 16 million at the end of the biennium. Uh, I have a description in there. Uh, that the account is capped at a level that is equivalent to 6% of the general fund appropriations in the second year of the biennium. So there's a cap of how much that can go into this, but the way this was written, um, as the budgets grow over the years, that cap should grow. So it's kind of an inflationary component for the fire fund. The fire fund, it, it is uh, appropriated to the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation for fire suppression. Uh, and we were kind of over the recent years, it's been about 50 million per biennium is the cost. Other allowable uses, uh, you can see down there, there's a there is a restriction on the other allowable uses. The balance has to be more than 3% of the general fund appropriations in second year of the biennium. That's about 90 million in the 2025 AM. Uh, then up to 1% of the general fund appropriation or about $30 million may be used for the following. So that's fuel reduction and mitigation, forest restoration, grants of equipment for county cooperatives, uh, some forest managed projects on federal land, um, and then other supportive collaborative groups that we can uh, uh, support road maintenance on federal lands and fire preparedness. Uh, the and then the other in the other change here, which is minor, but I'm going to point it out. You'll see that kind of gray arrow that backs that goes from right to left back into the general fund. Uh, prior to House Bill 883, the fire suppression fund retained the interest earned on that account. Uh, but now any interest earned on that account goes back into the general fund. So we do have some state partners in wildlife suppression. And when I we have uh, the county co-op uh, protection arrangements. Uh, these are basically all the local firefighters. What's important about those folks is they are almost always the initial attack on fires in Montana. Uh, we all know about the big fires that occur every year. We, you know, in a bad year, we might have four or five big fires, but we typically have about 2,000 wildfires that happen every year. Uh, why do not you hear about them? Well, you don't hear about them because the local county and fire protection people uh, basically race to the site and get those fires out before they get above 10 acres in size. Uh, and that's kind of a, a, a key acreage. That's what DNRC looks for. So about 96% of every 6% of all wildfires that start in Montana get put out before they get beyond 10 acres. Also through this program over the years, DNRC has provided about 360 fire engines and water tenders to local fire department and DNRC trains more than 3000 local government firefighters each year. We also have the landowner fire protection fee, which I discussed earlier. This is if landowners get together and decide that they want to, they want to give us a fee, they get charged an amount uh, for uh, that protection. Then we have the federal assistance uh, and the federal assistance is primarily from the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA. Uh, there are some um, uh, criteria that need to be, meet, to be met uh, on the fire, uh, but typically at the end of the year, as we track the balance in the fire fund, the DNRC and the federal federal government will negotiate on aid from the federal government. Uh, and then that money will go replace any money that was spent out of the, uh, the fire suppression account, uh, any assistance we get back.
that's uh, basically the end of my discussion on this. Um, I would like you to know that on October 10th, the MARA committee is going to meet and we're going to have a special session on uh, wildfires, uh, how the practices, the finances, and the future. It's going to be about three hours. DNRC, DEQ, the Forest Service are going to be there. Headwaters Economics will also be there. We're also going to bring in the energy companies that manage the high, high voltage power lines that distribute power around the state. Um, we also bring in the insurance companies to discuss issues involving uh, the difficulty or the inability to get fire insurance. Uh, this is happening in many parts of the country, and they'll discuss the situation here in Montana. And the insurance commissioner's office from the state auditor's office will be there. And so this, uh, we're going to do this together to... Um, uh, provide a uh, better understanding of the challenges that face Montana and wildfire suppression. And Susie, that's the end of my slide deck. Thank you, Rob. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, it doesn't. Okay, yes. Yeah. Representative Curdy. Susie, nothing at this time. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all for.